The center of mass is a deep conceptual problem in physics, and there's a lot of ways to explain it that get very complicated. And there's a lot of formulas that you can attach onto it, which say a lot of things, but if you don't know the core concept of center of mass, it, they're kind of useless. Um, you could say that center of mass of any object is simply the point somewhere close or in the object, which if all the constituent small mass particles of that mass were concentrated in only a single point, then it would be that point. Using the center of mass, you can say that all forces acting on the object behave as if they were acting on a single point. Well, sometimes it's hard to conceptualize center of mass, especially for physical objects. Um, but um, sometimes you don't need equations to be able to find the center of mass. Sometimes you can use the simple tricks of the physical world. So say we have this triangle which does not have an intuitive center of mass like a symmetrical object. Well, one easy way you can find the center of mass is if you were to hang it from any point, then what you find is that it hangs at a certain angle. Well, this angle is actually based on a straight line running down that hanging line. And what this actually means is that the force of gravity is the only is the force push, pulling this object down. Everything to the right of this line has a certain mass. Everything to the left of this line has a certain mass. And they're pushing down at the same force of gravity so that this thing is not rotating. So what this actually is, is some kind of symmetrical line if you think of this as constituent mass parts which are of equal mass. So what you can actually say is that the center of mass lies on this line. But you don't know exactly where it is unless you hang this object from a new line. And what you actually can do then is draw a new line straight down this line. And once again, the force of gravity is directed straight downwards Everything to the right of this line balances everything to the left of this line. And therefore, it holds true for both lines and any line you draw, hanging this object from any direction. And you'll always get an intersection right here, which is the center of mass. So for a two-dimensional object, you only need to hang the object from two different positions because all you need is an intersection of two lines to get the center of mass in this plane. Of course, not all objects are 2D. Um, what we're actually doing here is, here is the third dimension of the object, and we're assuming that we know the center of mass also lies somewhere not out of this object because it is symmetrical in this axis. So for a three-dimensional object, all you have to do is simply draw a third line although it is hard to draw lines through three-dimensional objects. What about something like this? Um, this is, again, two-dimensional, so we only have to look at it in this plane. And in fact, this is symmetrical in one axis. If we choose this to be, let's say, the y-axis, we know already that if we hunt it, intuitively it would hang here because each side is shaped exactly the same way. So we know that the center of axis the center of mass is already somewhere in this line that cuts this object symmetrically. But now we hang it from this point. And we notice that the line straight down kind of behaves in this manner. So if we know already that we had this axis and now it intersects with this straight down, the center of mass might not actually be in this object at all. I would say it's probably right about here. So this proves that center of mass never, doesn't necessarily have to be in the object itself, which is a very important understanding of why how objects behave when you throw them. Because objects, when thrown, will always rotate around that center of mass.